Hey there, welcome to another quantitative reasoning video. This is from section 5C in our textbook, um, which is visual representations of data basically, but I've also taken the box plots and quartile stuff that was at the end of 6B. We didn't do that in 6B, and I'm putting it here in 5C because they go together. They're all visual rep representations. So you've got worksheets and stuff you can pull up in D2L like always. So make sure that you get those and um, work along with us, okay? So in order to talk about a box plot, we have to talk about the concept of quartiles first. And quartiles are based on the concept of the median, okay? So the middle quartile or the second quartile is just the median of the entire data set. And so just like we found the median in 6A, that median, if there's an odd number of data points, then the median is the middle number. If there's an even number of data points, then the median is the mean, the average of the two middle numbers. You add them together, divide by two. All right, so when you're finding quartiles, you have to find this first. You split the data in half, basically. And then the lower quartile is the median of the lower half of the data set, okay, of the bottom half. And again, if the the bottom half has an odd number, it, it's the middle number. If the bottom half has an even number, you find the average of the middle two, okay? And then the upper quartile is the median of the upper half of the data set. Again, we find the middle first, and we split it into two halves, and then we find the median of the bottom and the median of the top, okay? So we're just cutting in half and then cutting in half again. That makes us quartiles, okay? So a box plot is what's known as a visual representation of the five number summary for a data set. So a data set has five numbers that we're interested in if we're trying to give a layout of kind of where the data is, the distribution. We need the lowest value and the highest value, and then we need the three quartiles, the lower, the middle, and the upper quartile, okay? And so the box plot shows that graphically. So what we're gonna do is do this example where we find the five number summary for each of these for the big bank and the best bank, all right? Thankfully, they've already been listed out in order, okay? So we don't have to rearrange. And so the low number is really easy, right? 4.1, that's the lowest number. The highest number is really easy, 11.0, okay? But then to find the quartiles, we need to find the median first. So we do this, this one first. Uh, how many numbers do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It's an odd number. And so if we take 11 and divide it by 2, we get 5.5. So we round that up to the sixth number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's the middle number. 7.2 is the middle number, so the median 7.2. Okay, And now we have the bottom half, these five data points and the top half of these five data points. The median doesn't count now. Okay, we take the median out, we split it there. We have five on the bottom and five on top. Because this is odd also, we have a middle number for the bottom, 5.6, that's Q1. And we have a middle number for the top set, that's 8.5, that's Q3. And so our five number summary for big bank is 4.1, 5.6, 7.2, 8.5, and 11. And we'll show you how to graph that out on a box plot here in just a moment. Best Bank is also laid out with 11 customers, 11 numbers. You guys pause the video real quickly and go ahead and fill out the five number summary for me. Okay, so the five number summary, 6.6 .6 is the lowest, 7.8 is the highest. Once again, the middle number is 7.2. And then if we divide in half there, we get 6.7 and 7.7 as our lower and upper quartiles, respectively. Okay? So once you do that, then we want to distribute that out and write it up as a box plot. Okay? So here's what a box plot looks like. Basically, you've got bars on the end. You've got lines connecting to a box in the middle. And then this box has, some, at some point, 
a division line, okay? So what happens is this is the lowest number, this is the highest number, this is the median or the second quartile, this number is the first quartile, and this number is the third quartile. That's how a box plot's laid out. And you want to do it, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's not like you need to, to get a you know, ruler out or something like that, but these numbers should be semi-corresponding to a number line, okay? So if this is two and this is seven and this is eight, well, two and seven should not be this close. Seven and eight should be a lot closer, right? So they should be, it should, it should make sense, right? This number would not be seven. This would be more like a four, okay? That might work. That would be fine. And you don't have to label two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can just give me the five numbers, okay? Um, that's fine too. But obviously, if this is three and this is two distance, then that should be shorter than this distance, that kind of thing. So I'm going to look for that a little bit. So let's take a look at the picture. They've put both Big Bank and Best Bank on the same number line, two different box plots, but the same number line so that you can kind of see how it's supposed to lay out and the spread. Okay, so here is Big Bank, 4.1 all the way up to 11. And because they had decimals and stuff like that, they went ahead and put the number line out to try to compare. But again, you don't have to do that. I'm just looking for these five numbers and the approximate distances to be appropriate. So even though 7.2 was the median for both, you see that the low and the high for Best Bank was much closer than the low and the high for Big Bank. And so in a waiting time scenario, if you go to Best Bank, you pretty much know you're going to be there between six and a half, seven and a half minutes. That's about it. But in Big Bank, who knows? The median is 7.2, but you might be there as low as 4.1, or you might be there for 11 minutes instead. And so, you know, it's a much more, it's a much larger spread there for, for the big bank, okay? But anyway, so that's a box plot, and that's, um, that's how you do them. And you just lay them out, you five the fi find the five number summary, and then you lay them out. You've got a worksheet on those to practice, okay? The other type of visual representation of data that I want to talk about, um, obviously you should be able to read different types of charts and graphs, a pie chart, um, that kind of thing. You should be comfortable with that, and there's some practice problems for that. But the one other one that I want to show you how to develop and create on your own is what's known as a histogram. Okay, so a histogram is kind of looks like a bar chart, but the bars are connected to one another. Okay, so you'll have a range of values on the bottom, and then you'll have these bars that look something like this, all right, that are connected to one another. That's a histogram. So the two important things that we need to be able to do is being able to be able to kind of count these up nicely and, and group them, and we want to make a good group. All right, here we have numbers from 1 to 18 that are distance from uh, in a, a workplace, Sobeys. Uh, employees have to travel that far. This is in kilometers um, because I got this from Canadian uh, education site. And so anyway, what we have to do is we want to break them up into these classes. And so a class is just a, a, a group here, but what we want to make sure is that the first thing is we have five to eight of them, no more, no less. Okay, and the second thing is they need to be the same width. So you can't go like 90 to 100 and then 80 to 89 because 90 to 100 is 11 scores and 80 to 89 is 10 scores, right? So you have to make sure you group things properly. So they've already laid it out for us. One to three, four to six, da, da, da. They got six classes. And so what I want you to do is I want you to tally up these. You've got um, 50 numbers, okay? So we're going to pause the video. You're going to pause the video and go ahead and work through those 50 numbers, grouping them with a tally mark. So for example, number one, this was person one minute, that goes here. Two minutes, that also goes here, right? And then when you get to a group of five, you put the little slash through them, you know what I'm talking about? So you wanna go through here six and seven, those both, that six goes here and seven goes here, 12 and 13, 12 goes here and 13 goes here, two back up here, six is here, nine is here, just like this. 
And so go ahead and pause the video and finish that out. And then we'll talk about what relative frequency means after we tally these all up. Notice that again that there's supposed to be a total of 50. So make sure that your frequencies tally to a total of 50. Okay, pause the video and finish this out and we'll come back in a minute. Okay, so our frequencies are listed here, 10, 14, 10, 6, 5, and 5, and those do add up to 50, and so I think I'm probably right. And so the relative frequency, though, is really a little bit more important, to be fair, because if I have say that, that 10 people have a certain trait, well, is that 10 out of 50 or 10 out of 500? Like, that makes a difference, right? So we take 10 out of 50, and we divide it, and then we multiply by 100% to get a percentage, and so that gives us 20%, okay, 14 out of 50, that gives us 28%, 10 out of 50 again is 20%, 6 out of 50 is 12%, and if, if they don't come out evenly, right, just round off to the nearest percentage, and that's fine, unless it says otherwise, and so rounding off to the nearest whole percentage, you might not get a perfect 100%. But in this case, I didn't have to round anywhere, so I got a perfect 100%, and that makes sense. That's another way to check that your answer is correct, okay, or probably correct. So now, how do I make a histogram out of this, okay? So once again, I draw kind of my first quadrant of a graph, like this was x and y axis, except here we have our classes, and so this is kilometers. Our classes are 1 to 3, 4 to 6. We try to make them the same width, 7 to 9, 10 to 12, 13 to 15, and 16 to 18. Okay, and we're going to make a bar that's that same width, and then how high do we go? Well, we go all the way to 14, so I don't want to do 14 tick marks, so maybe I'll just do... 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. That should work pretty well. Okay, and I'll change the color here just so make it a little bit easier. So we've got 10 in the 1 through 3 group. Okay, we have 14 in the 4 through 6 group. Okay. 10 in the 7 through 9 group. And then we start to get smaller. We have 6 in the 10 to 12, 5 in between 4 and 6, 5 in both of these last two groups. All right, and some books will ask you to color this in, whatever, I don't really care about that. Okay, but notice that it's clearly labeled kilometers. And over here is frequency. It's always going to be frequency on the left-hand side. Okay, this is just whatever we're grouping, talking about. And so it's clear that the majority, um, this is kind of what's called skewed to the left. It's not a bell curve. It's kind of skewed to the left. And so it's obvious that the majority of the workers live within 10 kilometers. Anyway, so kind of the distribution there, okay? So when you're creating your own histogram, make sure that you have five to eight classes. Make sure the classes are the same width. I'll give you how many classes to use. And so it makes it kind of easy. Um, and also don't just go, you know, if your numbers are eight to 41, don't go one to 10, 11 to 20. You know, you should start with the bottom being the smallest number and the highest being the highest number. So right here, our numbers went from one to 18. We didn't do 1 through 20, we didn't do 1 through 25, we did 1 to 18. 1 was the lowest number, 18 was the highest number, okay? So 18 different numbers divide by 6, you get 6 classes of 3. So usually if you're, um, if you're trying to find your class width, you can just divide by either 5, 6, 7, or 8, whichever goes evenly into the total number, uh, the total distance between your, your, your range, basically, plus 1. So, um, but... Again, if you have questions about that, uh, let me know. So as always, work through the My Math Lab and the worksheets. And if you have questions, then we'll meet together next week and be able to go over it. Okay, thanks.